Hello there. Serve from 17 once again. This is my... I was going to say Bloodborne then, because the folder that this is in is on the header of Adobe. <laughs> but this is not Bloodborne at all. That is coming after this. This is Batman Arkham Knight. New Game Plus difficulty video walkthrough. Unfinished New Game Plus as well, because I had a recording problem. And the rest of the walkthrough is going to be on hard. And you might wonder uh, why I've chose to do it that way. Uh, the reason I've chose that is because... Uh, I couldn't really stomach playing the game that many times through again because I don't want to ruin the experience for me, I don't want to start resenting the game and I suppose I could always come back and, and go back in and finish it off and then add it as like an unlisted video set to something like that. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But we're going to be going after some Cobra tanks and some missile launchers in this video. And we're also going to be talking about certain aspects of the game, of the DLC, and of certain things that are happening within the Batman universe at this point. I did upload the Riddler boss fight, the secret boss fight, and the true final ending of the game, but it was flagged, so you're probably not going to get to see that. I'm going to try and just upload the fight, see if that helps, but it got flagged by somebody who did the music for the game, and I'm so fucking sick of this entitled bullshit, like... Do they understand what fair usage law is? It's in the fucking game, dude. It's in the game. It was always going to be in the game. Everybody else is having no issue. Why am I? Like, it, it's just retarded that it can be so anal with this. And I appreciate that they're wanting to avoid lawsuits because it is real. But at the same time, you've got a fucking site full of lawsuits. Yet you just seem to be cock-blocking people that don't have any influence whatsoever. It just It's really frustrating. But this is a fantastic touch as well. You're able to come back to GCPD headquarters, and the more you do in the world, the more it's reflected within here, because you'll see criminals, you'll see Arkham Knight's militia getting locked up, you'll gradually see the cells getting fuller and fuller, and it's a really nice touch, and it's a really cohesive way to make you feel like you're making a difference in Gotham. That being said, I think you can only access it with the car, which I think is retarded. But here is uh, Poison Ivy in her rather seductive looking foliage underwear or genitalia, depending on what that's meant to be. And we're going to be taking her um, on a little tour. But when you get to this door, Cash is going to open the door for us because there's some Cobra tanks outside. And we have to scan each side of the Cobra tank. And I did this literally minutes before I started recording this because this is close to where I am on the hard run that I started to, to get back up for this guide. You have to scan the left, right flanks and the back flanks. If you touch the tank, Batman will fold like a deck chair and die. It's hilarious. And then the checkpoint is before you exited the garage. Or the, uh, the car park or whatever. So just try not to touch it. As long as you're not in the lasers, you're fine. If you're in the lasers, you're probably going to be in trouble. I'm not the biggest fan of scanning anything in these games because I do think it can be kind of awkward and obtuse. Especially when you're going for the Riddler stuff and it's like, it's too small, it's obscure, it's still too small, it's obscure. And and, and you just, a real big song and dance. But get it scanned and then we're going to come out and we're going to do some Cobra Tank combat, which is incredibly easy but annoying. And you shouldn't have too much issue with it. If you've upgraded your Batmobile so that it's got really good armor, and if it's got that shot that lures the Cobra tanks around, you can probably be a little bit better than me, but at this point, I don't have either of those, and I won't on the next videos either, because they're not upgrades that I'm going to do much with, or even get to in the space of this playthrough, which... The one thing that sucks on this game is when you're used to playing with Batman when he has a ton of great combat abilities, a ton of great grapple abilities, and then you start a new game and you've got none of them, and it feels really slow. Like traversing the town, doing all the cool brick beatdowns and things. This is a bad start, by the way, but he didn't see me. If you look at the map, the map is what you need to keep your eyes on here. It will show you the path of the tank, it'll show you where he's facing, it'll show you how you need to flank him. And then get behind him, wait for the lock to happen, and then fire. I think this is a terrible mechanic. I think it's arbitrary and silly. I think you should just have to shoot it. That way, it would really feel like a siege. It would really feel like you're playing hide and seek and getting in there like a classic Atari game. But instead, it just, it's awkward. And that lock on will get you screwed so many times when that tank decides to turn around. And you know, I don't have to explain it, you, you know. But the DLC, so, I posted on Twitter the other night that there's this mod that Kotaku was talking about, or Kotaku, sorry. And the mod was somebody on PC, even though the PC version is running really poorly at the minute and it's been pulled and all that bad stuff because whoever developed it did a very poor job. 
people have already modded it so that you can free roam as any of the characters that are in the uh, the files for the game. Which means you can run around as Harley Quinn if you've got the DLC, or as the Red Hood guy, who I would love to play as, but I don't have him. You can run around as Azrael, you can run around as Joker in third person with the gun, or Joker in first person. Like, you can run around as Nightwing, Robin, you name it, you can play as them and explore the city and have a ton of fun, which I think is a great idea. Yet, there's a chance that we'll never see that, because there's this little pocket on the menu that says Arkham Stories or Arkham Episodes, I don't know if you've seen it. And when you look at the season pass, the season pass dictates that they're going to be releasing these kind of standalone stories that explain the events of what your allies were doing during this entire endeavour in Gotham and in other parts of storylines as well. So on the one side, we know we're going to get content where we get to play as these, these other people and we can have fun with it and hopefully it's innovative and new and cool and great and worth the money. But I don't think it will be. And that's coming from somebody who is such a visual whore when it comes to playing as someone who looks cool and who has cool animations, who makes me feel good when I'm playing, that like I'll probably buy it just on visuals alone. Yet I have no hope that the mechanics will be anywhere near interesting because look at the Harley Quinn DLC from Arkham City. You played as Robin and it was really fun playing as him, but everything you did was stuff taken from the main game and then there was that novelty boss fight with Harley Quinn which was essentially just a a weirder version of the Two-Face fight, like, be under no illusion, there was nothing groundbreaking about that DLC, it was poor. And then there was the combat challenges, which I didn't buy on console, but I did get them on PC, and I had a lot of fun with them because I love playing as Nightwing, I'm a, a Nightwing fanboy apparently. But I just, I don't see them being great, I think the only real lull and draw to play them will be the new engine and will be people's you know enjoyment of them and playing as anybody but Batman in this awesome game and then it makes you wonder what the other DLCs are going to be like they do say there's going to be story DLC for Catwoman which will be cool because it'll be the first time you've got, got to play as uh, Barbara Gordon as Catwoman and her suit looks awesome if you found the Riddler trophy or the Riddle sorry like, I'm really excited for that one, that could be really, really good. And they've also mentioned more storyline stuff. I don't know if that has anything to do with the uh, secret ending. There's the Joker doing the man bat thing. But it's, it's really curious, because for a game that has so much going for it, and it has so many of these great characters already modelled, already animated really fluidly, You'd think they'd want to give them to you. You'd think they'd want the player to, you know, to to enjoy all the hard work they did making them. And it just seems like easy mode for me to do that kind of stuff. And I appreciate that they're holding a lot of things back because they want to sell them to you because the gaming industry's changed and Simple Economics states that if we can sell something to you, why would we ever give it you for free? And as sad and as cynical as that sounds, it is unfortunately true but they've got so many great characters, they've got this fantastic engine, they've got the majority of the work already done. You know, I would want to capitalise on it in so many ways. Like, can you imagine a new Arkham episode every week, or every two weeks? And it was just storylines from, you know, popular comics, or storylines that they were making up that were, you know, written by the people who do the comics. They could have this constant drip of, of interesting fiction and folklore coming your way and events and, and different circumstances that would keep people playing this game for, for quite some time maybe and you know make it feel like it's got this rich heritage that it deserves because Batman has a rich heritage but instead they've, they've gone very selective in how they chose to do it and all of it sounds like it's going to be charged under a ludicrously expensive season pass and one of the DLCs they mentioned is going to have completely new mechanics which if the new mechanics are actually really good and they're not featured in the main game that to me is slap worthy because I hate that. I hate any game that saves a really cool idea for something extra that a lot of people won't buy on principle that DLC is usually worthless. And I find that really sad because you could get so many great experiences from people who love your game but they don't trust DLC because of the bad reputation it has and then they don't go anywhere near it which is, is sad for both yourself who's made this fantastic game and the people who want to experience your fantastic game. And I'll always think of uh, an album called Digimortal by Fear Factory, which I don't think it's a very good Fear Factory album, but I think there's a couple of songs on it that are really fun. 
but there was a, a special edition version of it, like a Japanese edition or something, where there was a bunch of extra songs, and one of those extra songs was pretty much better than half the songs on the album for me personally. It was a song called Dead Man Walking, and I thought it had a really nice riff, it had a really catchy, hooky chorus with a great melody, and there were songs on that album that didn't, <laughs> that it took priority over. And I was always baffled as to why they chose that, and I think it's very similar here, where there are certain aspects of gameplay that some people like, some people don't, and it's interesting to see which ones they pick and choose between, as we do this tank combat which takes entirely too long sometimes. That being said, I wasn't using my special abilities to speed it up, I was just shooting them. The virus is so overpowered, you want to use it on anything that's got a missile lock. Anything that's a missile lock or that's got the triple laser beams, because they're really powerful tanks and they will do you dividends. But now that we've done that, Lucius fits our Batmobile with this... this weird ground thumping mechanic which I don't like. And you might be like, why don't you like it? Very simple. Anything that makes me push in the left analog stick for more than a second is something I will dislike. And you have to hold this for a while and it feels just really unresponsive and, and just not very fun to do. A little bit like the menus from the new Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition where every time you do anything and you move menus it saves. So when you're trying to navigate the menus it doesn't move and it makes it feel like it's sluggish and delayed when it's not, it's just saving. <laughs> All the time. But we come out of there and we're up against uh, another armada of tanks, another heavy infantry or whatever you want to call them, steel cavalry, you know, you can make up your own fancy saying. So there it is, do you see the roots? Uh, move to the centre of the roots, there'll be a circle and in that circle will be the plant that you need to resurrect for, ha for Ivy, who I just called Harvey for some reason. That's so funny. I love, I love the way you electrocute people, but it's really frustrating when you're trying to get the Riddler informants and you double tap to jump out of the Batmobile and the Batmobile boosts forwards doing the dodge and you end up hitting them because you were holding the analog. And it's a one hit knockout as well, so there's no take backs, which is a little bit frustrating, but it's funny. <laughs> well, that's something I should speak of too. If you're looking for the Riddler trophies and you're having issues, Aside from the obvious, which is, you know, to follow a walkthrough, which is what a lot of people say, which I refuse to do for a lot of the time, which is ironic considering I make walkthroughs, <laughs> but I had a glitch, and I, and I use the term glitch loosely because I don't think it was a glitch, I just think it was one of those moments where the game was having a rough time, or for whatever reason it decided to do something it wasn't supposed to, which I don't think that is a glitch. Glitch is something when the game is, is like, broken at that point, and... This was just the map not displaying correctly. So how this works is, when I did the serial killer side quest, there is a riddle in his room that only unlocks once you capture him, and there is a Riddler trophy in the room as well. And it's classed as an interior. It's on Founders Island. And what happened was, when you die in the boss fight, which I did because I couldn't get to the pig and I was getting worked down and I have base life and it's on hard and whatever you want to say, I died. The checkpoint is from outside. So in my frustration, I ran back in and I didn't do the riddle and I didn't pick up the trophy. I just ran for the boss and I beat him. And then I forgot about it, obviously. So I got to the point where I needed two trophies and they weren't on the map anywhere. There was not a single one on the map. All the interiors checked. Everything checked, nowhere to be found. There was no Riddler informants anywhere. I drove around the city for an hour. Every island, flying, gliding, in the car, no green people whatsoever. I thought I had ruined my game. I thought I'd just done something and I was I, I could never get it. So I was kind of pissed, not in a good mood whatsoever. And then I was checking on some places where people on the forums had said they forgot to find some. And you know, if there was any missable trophies, if anything was missable. And all the time in the back of my head I was thinking, in I Asylum and in City, I don't think there were ever any missable ones. I think Rocksteady were better than that. They, they had a better level of design. So I, I knew I'd be able to get it, I just couldn't figure out where it was. So I ended up getting a, a video of somebody collecting all of them on Founders Island, and I started going through it. And I, and I think there's like 30 to do. And I did maybe 5, and I was so fucking bored I had to stop. And it was just that moment of, I'm probably never going to find this. And then as I was clicking off, um, I saw an interior that had one, and it was it was the serial killer's house. I was like, oh, I forgot about that. So I looked on the map, and it was nowhere to be found. It was nowhere, and I was looking everywhere for it. So I looked it up, 
I found where it should have been on the map, and there was no house blue icon and insignia showing you could go inside. It was just a holographic building. So I put my little back logo on it, went to it, and lo and behold, both the riddle and the trophy were inside it. And when I came outside, it was magically back on the map as a blue house that you could enter. And uh, it was annoying, but it was the last one I needed. So as happy as I was, if you're having issues or if you gain that spot of bother, that's exactly what your problem is, guys. Uh, almost impossible to tell as well at times, unless you've got a fantastic memory. But we transition out of the Panessa Studios, and we're going to be moving now towards taking out some missile, uh, missile turret emplacements. This is a pretty fun sequence. I do like these building site predator missions, and uh, we're also going to be using the tank where we have to sneak up and, and take out a turret, which I literally just did before I started recording these commentaries, because once I do this, I'm going to start doing the live recording, because I need to get this Batman finished. There's no games now until... Like Metal Gear, so there's a massive dead spawn where I can finish up Witcher, I can finish up, you know, the Bloodborne walkthrough because I still have to record the last two bosses of that, even though I've edited most of it, and then I can finish up my wonderful 101 stuff, and I can finish up maybe the Kingdom Hearts stuff and just get Final Fantasy X to you. A lot of stuff closing, a lot of stuff beginning, but this is Arkham Knight and. It's such a fun game. Just traversing the city is really fun. and I love how it's raining, and I, I appreciate that it's got the whole cliché trope of it's always raining, it's always mysterious, it's always nouveau. You know, it's crazy noir awesomeness all the time. But I, I love how the, the lighting looks so striking in the rain. It just adds to that visual flair of something looking really, really wonderful. And this is a game where I want stuff to do. It's just like Sunset Overdrive, and... I'm definitely going to be looking into some of the DLC because I'm excited to bring more of this content to my channel and play it. But at the same time, I can't justify 32 quid for a season pass that's probably going to have things in it I don't like. Like, I bought the season pass for Sunset Overdrive and it was the biggest waste of money I have spent on the Xbox One. Which... A lot of people have been asking me why I haven't played this on PlayStation 4 because this game was apparently designed for PlayStation 4. I've looked everywhere to see where this person got that statement from, and I haven't been able to find it. So the notion that this was designed for PlayStation 4, I think, is false. I think what is true is that it runs better on PlayStation 4, and that is fact. Because if you look into it, if you check all the articles, it runs at 1080p, and the Xbox One version runs at 900p. So what you're watching now is a visually inferior version of this game. However, the difference between 900 and 1080p is very, very slight, and it's something that almost nobody will be able to spot through the compression of YouTube, you know. Videos that get compressed lose quality anyway, so for, for the crazy sticklers in that, you're only noticing that stuff when you're playing, and when I play this game, it looks wonderful, and the reason that I picked it on this console is because I'm invested in Microsoft's consoles, because that's where all my friends are, it's got the pad I prefer, and I have over 300,000 achievement points which, if I'm going to do some kind of collectibles on a, on a system level, it's not going to be trophies, because I have like nine trophies, and I have no urge whatsoever to get them, but achievements do something for me, and I mention this all the time, but people still ask, so it, it just it's either people aren't watching or people aren't listening, and I don't know which one it is, but it can get a little bit annoying, so I just thought I'd address it there as best as I can. It's nothing to do with being a fanboy, guys. The PlayStation 4 is the better console by far, and additionally, at past that, PC is the best console by far because all the bullshit we have to put up now is stuff you never used to put up with on consoles. You never had to install bullshit for ages. You never had to do 10 gig fucking day one patches. You never had to do any of this bullshit that you've done from day one on PC and is the single reason I hate playing on PC. Like, I don't play games to sit and wait for the first three hours like I did with this. I play games because I want to play them. And at this point... What's the point in having a console when they're all pushing poor resolutions, poor frame rates because they can't cut it yet because nobody knows how to make it work as well as it will in two to three years when you could just get a PC that is at the limit of your own understanding and at the expenses that you're able to shell out on it. So, you know, if, if we're going to go when it comes to stuff like that, I think objectively you've got to look at it that way. PC is best, and it's PlayStation 4, and it's Xbox One. Infrastructure-wise, I always... I always used to think that Xbox Live was better, and I still do, but 
PlayStation is making a hell of a lot of marks towards making their service better, and hopefully in a few years, it, it will be. So, I think you've got to look at it less about honesty to these corporations that want your money, and more about competition and driving the industry forwards. I don't care what console I'm playing on as long as it's not PC, for those aforementioned reasons. Just as long as I'm playing great games, and I'm actually playing them. That is all I want, guys. Like when I'm sat and playing and I don't have a care in the world and I'm smiling and I'm enjoying myself and you know certain things are frustrating me, certain things are rejuvenating me, it's a great feeling. Everything else is frustrating to no end and uh, that's the stuff that we should be fighting against. Not against each other because you, you like fucking Sony's colours or Mr. Microsoft because he thinks that you know Bill Gates is his best mate or, or whatever these people say. Like, all you're doing is giving them free marketing and getting into pointless, you know, sophisms on the internet, which a lot of people like to do. But blind the turret, then you can come in here and take him out and then hit this. And I think this is really cool because in, in a lesser version of Arkham, you would have had to press A to rip off the panelling and then you would have had to use the sticky gel. But in this, sticky gel on, press the trigger, it pulls it off, he squirts it and he detonates it without you having to press anything. Really, really intuitive. Makes me wonder why the hell you have to get out the car sometimes to press a fucking button. But there you go. Get the bat toothpaste in the hole and detonate. Oh. Okay. Swiftly moving on. We're moving towards the last third of the game. And the last third of the game, I think, is a definite dif difficulty increase. And it's a difficulty increase because there's a very challenging fight against the Arkham Knight, which isn't a fight. It's a game of hide-and-seek with a guy who one-shots you. And then, of course, there is the tank battles and the crazy to Total Recall drilling machine battle, which they're not too bad, but they can be. And, and that's the distinction here, folks. Whenever I make these walkthroughs, you're watching the successful runs edited together into a single successful run, which makes it look like that there's no struggle, there's no challenge, that you just, you know, it's just another day at the office and we knocked it out. And as much as I can tell you that I barely died on the recording of New Game Plus, I still died, and I still had failures, and a lot of them came in the latter third of the game. So if you're having issue, and it looks like it's really easy on my screen, it's entirely down to the RNG of the game. Games are very look-based, folks. A lot of the times the modifier is yourself, but a lot of the other times it's the game itself. And nobody has perfect luck all the time, nobody gets the best pattern all the time, and sometimes you just get unlucky. It doesn't give you the excuse to blame the game when it's you at fault all the time, which is really easy to do and we're all guilty of it at times. But it should be a motivation to make you think, what if I try this or what if I do this differently? And it's really frustrating that I recorded all of this so quickly and I haven't managed to share it with you. But I'm doing my best, folks, and I'm hoping you're enjoying it because this is a really cool game. And if you're on the fence about playing it, please do. Rocksteady have managed to craft one of the better trilogies in video games currently, and I just think it's really worth your time. But here is a building site predator mission. There's a lovely takedown. Notice how it said takedown though, not silent. That is noisy, so get up the vent as quick as you can. What you saw then was me trying to get in the vent using right trigger and A. It's not how you do it, you have to grapple into the ones above you. It's just inexperience there. And if I go over now, I can get both of them in a double takedown, but I don't know if I decide to do it. I could wait for a fear takedown and get three of them. The guy to my right just then, he is detecting my vision mode. Whenever I have vision on, he detects it. You can use it to your advantage though to make him stop and confuse him. And if you take him out, you won't have the threat of it. But I'm going to try with the looks of this and get a nice fear takedown. But it looks like I'm procrastinating rather than being aggressive. Believe it or not, fortune does truly favour the bold in this game. So sometimes it's worth it just rushing in there and, and getting business done. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you'll die in a burst of gunfire. Other times it'll work wonderfully, but I appear to be rather timid at this point, which is not a problem. It's still a, a really good strategy. So two guys there, one to the right of him. He's dropping down, so he's isolated. He's going to die now. Well, will not die, technically, because Batman doesn't kill, does he? Somebody's shooting. Interesting. I wonder what he was shooting at. Does anybody look like they know where I am? Maybe it was a turret? Interesting. Two guys over there. Come on, Chris, get your over there. Aggressive, boy. Aggressive. Two guys below us. Two over there. There's also a weak wall close to them, and we're going to try and do a corner. 
The corner takedown is so good on this game because he can bat hook them towards you. Back claw them, sorry. Go on, Chris, get him. Silent him. Do him. There we go. Whoa, that was weird. <laughs> Gotta love it. The, the old bit of jank. So now there's three people. They're all together. We should be able to fear take down these effortlessly. Come on, Batman, get yourself over there. One of the things that still frustrates me to this day, and it has done ever since I played these games, backclawing to the wrong thing. 90% of the time, the assumption that the game makes is spot on. But that 10% that is the most rage-inducing thing. <laughs> it is so frustrating. But there we go. One of the things I really like about this game is when you do an encounter, the experience fills your HP. So it's a game where you never have to consciously heal, and I love that, because I hate healing. I, I'm a person who avoids healing at all costs in games, unless it's Witcher, because the combat in Witcher is just not good enough to do that game without having to eat. And I'm sure there'll be somebody who does do that, but watch how they play. You know, watch real close to how they play because they're going to be exploiting everything they can in that because it just doesn't play well enough for it to be something intuitive and interesting. Like, I could no damage this game and I would have a ton of fun doing it. It'd be tricky. It wouldn't be too bad. The hardest parts would be the tank and uh, maybe the predator sections, but you can do it. Witcher would be frustrating from the beginning to the end and for no other reason than because the game doesn't perform well enough. And for some bizarre reason, there's been a lot of contrast between this game and Witcher 3, even though they're so different, it's hard to compare them. And if you're going to compare them on a combat level, good luck, Witcher 3.